I think I look. I love New York City. I really do. Um, but it's not the best city in the world. I'll tell you guys um, about the best city in the world, which is Cabo in Mexico. Has anybody been? It's the best. It's the best. Let me tell you why. Best thing about Cabo. This is true. There's free cocaine in Cabo. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just gotta know how to get it. Now listen up, this is gonna be the best TripAdvisor tip you've ever received in your entire life. Free cocaine in Cabo, here's what you have to do. You must leave the resort, okay? Now the first thing they're gonna tell you when you go to Mexico is do not leave the resort. Those people don't know how to get free cocaine. <laughs> Those people are paying for their blow every time, okay? Listen to me. You gotta leave at the resort, you gotta go down to the local beach where everyone's like partying and hanging out, and you gotta hang out for about 20 minutes. After about 20 minutes, a little shady looking Mexican guy is gonna come up to you. He's gonna be covered in tattoos, he's not gonna be wearing any shoes. That's the tell. <laughs> he's gonna be like, excuse me, senor. Would you like to try a hit of cocaine? And you're gonna be like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Who would say no to that question? Plus, that comedian told me you are gonna be here. You showed up right on time. That's incredible, 20 minutes on the dot. That's fucking crazy. And you're gonna take a, a free hit of cocaine. Then he's gonna be like, senor, would you like to purchase some cocaine? And this part's important, okay? At this point, you have to be like, no. <laughs> and walk away from that man. And that's how you get free cocaine. That's pretty simple. Yeah, but check this shit out. If you go like 30 yards up the beach and hang out another 20 minutes, another shady looking Mexican guy's gonna come up to you. Completely different guy, not wearing any fucking shoes. He's like, excuse me, senor, would you like to try it? You're gonna cut him off. You're gonna be like, fuck you, I'm gonna try some cocaine. <laughs> Let's party, baby, Cabo, woo! And you're gonna get another free hit of cocaine. It's like the food court at the mall, you know? Nobody buys bourbon chicken. <laughs> Just come back and get a free sample of bourbon chicken whenever the fuck you want one. Be like, I'll be back in 20 minutes. Thanks, idiot. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. I was getting free samples of cocaine all night in Mexico, okay? I'd get a free hit of cocaine, go 30 yards up the beach, hang out 20 minutes. Get another free hit of cocaine, go 30 yards up the beach, hang out another 20 minutes. Get another free hit of cocaine, go 30 yards up the beach, hang out another 20 minutes. Four hours later, I was in Chile. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> I don't know what happened. All I know is I had a blast in North or Central America that night. <laughs> I blacked out, that's the truth. You wanna know the, the absolute truth? I don't remember what happened, but I really did black out. It was the only time in my life that I've ever truly blacked out, okay? I woke up the next day in my hotel room at like 3 p.m. My wallet was missing, my shoes were missing, my first thought, was I selling coke on the beach with those guys last night? <laughs> what happened to my fucking shoes? Did I join a cartel? And I fucked up, I made a mistake because I called my girlfriend. I should have called up one of my buddies, but I called up my girlfriend and I told her the truth, which was a huge mistake. Because I just wanted to vent, okay? And women, they experience things differently. So I told her that I blacked out, followed these guys up the beach. You know what she started doing? She started crying. She started crying, okay? She's like, oh my God, are you fucking retarded? And I wanted to be like, okay, the R word, really? That's not cool, what are you? <laughs> it wasn't the time, so. She was like, what would you have done if you had been kidnapped or raped? That's what she said to me. And uh, this was kind of a heavy moment in my life. I gotta be honest with you guys, because we take this shit for granted. As men, we don't really look at shit that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we live our lives like we're invincible. And women, you gotta worry about that shit every day of your lives. You gotta take your drinks to the, to the bathroom. You have to worry about guys trying to hurt you, you know? It's fucked up. And then I started thinking about it even more, like, like how I would deal with something like that. Like, men and women are built so differently, you know? It started, like, really fucking me up and getting in my head. Like, let's play a game, okay? Like, miss, will you play this game with me? Okay, hypothetically speaking, let's say you go to Mexico, you get kidnapped, you get raped. <laughs> now, just taking a look at you, I'm gonna assume this is in the top five, six worst experiences of your life. Top 10, good, okay. <laughs> I'm assuming if this happens, no matter how much therapy you go to, no matter how much time passes, no matter what, you're probably never gonna truly get over this experience. It's probably gonna fuck you up for the rest of your life. Am I right? Of course. 
Let me explain to you the difference between me and this woman. If I got kidnapped and raped in Mexico, it would bother me for like two hours tops. <laughs> After like an hour and a half, I'm gonna be like, all right, there's free Coke on the beach out there. I'm not gonna sit here like an asshole and waste my Saturday night, am I right? If I don't go party, the rapists win, and I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna let them win tonight. <laughs> Look, the point of all of this is that women are sensitive, okay? And <laughs> I shouldn't have called my girlfriend. I should have called up one of my buddies. If I would have called up one of my male friends, it would have been a way different reaction. Dude, I think I got kidnapped and raped in Mexico last night. But you probably loved it, you homo, click. <laughs> You probably went to Mexico just for the cock, click. <laughs> that is the, uh, the world's longest rape joke. It really is. It is. And by the way, it, it, it's a dying art, the rape joke. Nobody's doing them anymore. Nobody's doing them anymore, you know? By the way, the only reason that rape joke works is because I'm the one getting raped in the joke. It's like a dude's getting raped. You guys are loving it. You're like, this guy's getting raped. This is fucking awesome. It's like a good family-friendly show. I love it. This guy's getting raped. And then I put it on her for one second. Everyone got uncomfortable. I was like, that's not cool. What are you doing? That's a woman. We don't joke about raping a woman. Then I put it back on me again. Everyone's like, oh, thank God. This guy's getting raped again. This is, thank God he's being raped. This is so funny. Um, I tried to do a rape joke on Last Comic Standing when I was on that show a few years ago. Um, and I'll, I'll end on this. <laughs> I did. I tried to do a rape joke on television. I did it in the audition process, and I got onto the show. I'll give you the quick version of the joke. It's a bad joke, okay? So I, usually I wear a hat. So I say, with my hat on, it looks like I might be a college student. And with my hat off, it looks like I might rape a college student. <laughs> So yeah, I thought this was a good idea to do for NBC's Last Comic Standing, obviously. <laughs> obviously, that's where you would do that joke. And uh, I did the joke in the audition process and I got onto the show. I got into the top 100 comedians of the country and we're gonna be taping it and we're gonna be filming it in front of a huge studio audience in Los Angeles. And when you do things on television, it's different, okay? Because on television, you have to transcribe every joke word for word. Every single joke word for word. And you have to send it into the producers and they have to approve everything. So I, I wrote out my set, everything included the words rape a college student, sent it off to NBC. I was like, they're gonna love it. They're gonna love this set. Five minutes later, I get an email back from the producers. And in the subject line, I swear to God, it says, are you fucking retarded? <laughs> and I went to like, okay, really, NBC? That's not, what are we doing? I left it alone. And they're like, you can't say rape a college student on TV. You can't say those words. You have to take that joke out or you have to change the joke, okay? And they, they let me change it. You know what they let me say? This is what I, this is what I changed it to. I changed it to kidnap a college student. I just changed one word. I changed the word rape to the word kidnap. That's it. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this is pretty stupid. They really look at it like America as being dumb people. Because let's be honest about this. If I'm gonna kidnap this college student, I'm probably gonna rape her. <laughs> Look, I'm not out there kidnapping college students. You don't gotta worry about this shit. But why else would I be kidnapping this chick? <laughs> I'm trying to fucking study. Guess again, NBC. Listen, New York City, you guys are the fucking greatest <laughs> comedy audiences in the world. I love you guys for coming out tonight. Thank you so much for supporting this. It means so much more than you know. Good night.